Hi everyone, it's Celeste and welcome to my channel. My channel is all about cosplay! Yay! I teach you tutorials on how to make the outfit, how to do the makeup so you can become the character of your dreams. Today's cosplay is Elsa from Frozen 2. In this tutorial, you'll learn how to make her travel jacket and the belt that goes along with it. If you haven't done so already, click that red button down below to subscribe to become a member of my sewing pin cushion called YouTube. If you have any questions on any parts of this tutorial that are not clear, leave a comment and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as possible. This is a very long tutorial, so let's go ahead and get started. Looking at this ultra high definition Elsa picture from Twitter, it looks so beautiful! And I noticed that this part is darker on the bottom and then it fades to be lighter. This is actually a nice dark color. So I actually have kind of the perfect fabric. I've been testing fabrics on the floor really quickly to see what I like. I really like this one, but this is way too thin and this could possibly be the underdress. So I think I'll do that. But obviously I'll use the more top portion and then probably invert it. And then this, this will be the main fabric. This is a very old fabric that I got at Joanne Fabrics. This does not exist anymore and like I bought so much of it. It's all the crystal trim that I have for the edging. So I do hope that I have enough of it. Deciding factors for me, like understanding what kind of shape I need to make this jacket is all the details. So if you could see, there's this yoke. Oh, darn it. Okay, well there's that yoke in the back and it has like a cutout on the back too, which is kind of weird. So I decided to use this pattern because of the back yoke. You can see that it has like this little cut up here and then this part I can kind of change the fabric and then all that fun stuff. Before starting any fabric cutting, iron out your pattern so it lays flat onto your fabric. I'm pinning the jacket pattern at the lightest part of the fabric. I'm cutting with pinking shears so the fabric doesn't fray. Once I have all of it cut out, I'm going to follow the instructions of the pattern. After assembling the front, I'm going to add the back yoke and then I'm going to stop there so I can proceed to add the clear part onto the back piece. A little bit of ironing actually goes a long way. So you can see how beautiful these seams are pressed here. But then when you go over to this side, they're really puffy and if I try to sew it down, it'll lay incorrectly. So you wanna sew down your seams and then iron them. I'm using clear vinyl leftovers from the Birds of Prey costume I made with Dina. I only need to cut out the center back piece. I cut out another center back piece in the blue fabric. I pinned two pieces together and drew a curve for the back. I'm going to join these two pieces together by sewing them at that curve. Cut off the top blue piece to reveal the clear fabric. Cut slowly and as close as you can to the seam line. To strengthen this seam, I'm going to be adding stretch elastic around it. Honestly, if I had bias tape, I'd use that but this color of stretch elastic was perfect for the job and I didn't want to spend more money. I'm going to carefully sew around the curved seam and slightly moving the elastic where it needs to go. When you get to the other side, go ahead and trim off the excess. Now go ahead and sew down the other side of the tape. This way it lays flat onto your back piece. Now that both pieces are properly joined and sealed off, I'm going to cut off the rest of the plastic material. Now I'm going to attach this piece to the side back pieces. I'm not attaching this to the yoke yet. I'm going to take a quick measurement of how long I need my cape pieces to be. Mine ended up being about 36 inches. I'm using this leftover chiffon fabric from my first Elsa cosplay. I'm going to go ahead and cut out two pieces, the length that I need for the cape. I decided to make my cape a little bit more like a trapezoid. This way it'll curve around the bottom part of my dress instead of being one solid rectangle. I decided that I wanted my cape to be a little bit more full since she is queen after all. I made sure to even up the bottom hem line and then when I was done I made sure to cut it in half. This way I had two even pieces. I didn't want any seams on the cape, so I burned the edges. If you haven't noticed, this has been coming a reoccurring thing for me edging. I really like burning it and it was really nice. It gave it kind of this nice ribbon edge. Made sure to do this on every single side because chiffon frays. If you're afraid of using fire, you could use fray check or you could use glue at the edges before you continue working with this material. Now I'm going to pin the cape to the back at the top. I'm going to make sure that the triangular part angle is on the outside and it faces towards the front of the jacket. Because I decided to make the cape very 
wide. I'm going to pleat it at the top so it lays nicely. I'm going to do a basting stitch as close as I can to the edge. Doing this will keep the cape where I want it to be when I attach the back to the back yoke. Looks like Bowser wants to keep hold of this fabric now. It says. Now I'm going to attach the back piece to the yoke piece with one simple stitch. Now join the front side and the back side. The top is now completed. Time to work on the sleeves by pinning and then cutting it out. These are the sleeves cut out. I'm really happy how they look. It's because the bottom of the fabric is a little bit darker than the top. You can see there's a huge color difference, but it's so subtle. So now what I'm gonna do is just sew them together at the sides and then I'm going to attach it to the top. What mess are you making? Please stop. Thank you. See also that the sleeve is really tight. I went ahead and tried on the sleeve really quickly and it's so loose. So you can see these small little lines here. I'm kind of measuring it out and then going back and sewing. So it's kind of like pinching and pinning and then double checking before I actually go in and sew this on. You can see this is what the sleeve looks like while it's being pinned. And now I just gotta sew it down. Following the pattern's instructions, I cut out some inner facing for the collar. Now I'm going to cover the collar in the blue fabric. And then I cut it out. I'm going to secure this down with the sewing machine, sewing all around the perimeter of the collar. It's okay if I mess up here because I need to cut it down anyways. I cut down the collar piece to 3 fourths so it doesn't close in the front. Now attach it to the jacket. With my jacket on the mannequin, I'm going to measure out how long I want the jacket to hang. With this measurement, make sure to take into consideration what heels you're going to use. This can change the length that you'll need. Mine ended up being like 24 inches. I really like the flare on this dress pattern, so I'm only going to be using the bottom half of it. So I'm going to be using the back piece, the side piece, and the side front piece. Of course, I'm going to pin it down and then cut it all out. You'll notice that I'm cutting all of the entirety of it versus the sizing. This is because I want to make sure that I have the correct ombre all over the jacket bottom. Now I'm going to bring it to the sewing machine and sew it together. After I finished assembling the skirt, I'm attaching it to the jacket top. Make sure to align it with the center back seam and the same back and then sew it forth. Now that the skirt is attached, I pinned it together so it's completely symmetrical. I'm marking out the correct length of the jacket and then cutting off the excess length. Try on your jacket and then cut away parts of the front to create a V. This will vary with everybody's body shape. I made sure mine started around my belly button and tapered to the collar piece. Sorry about the missing footage, I don't know what happened to it. Serge around the bottom hemline and the front opening of your jacket. I know I said we are adding bias tape, but I have this blue elastic that I'm using for my edging on this costume. Apply this all around the front opening and around the collar. This will hide any ugly hemming from the collar and give it a clean look. You'll apply right side of the bias tape to the wrong side of the fabric. So along the edge as close as possible. Once that's done, flip it over and top stitch down the bias tape on top of the right side of the fabric. So with that, we have finished the jacket base. The base looks so amazing and here you can see the bias tape looking very clean and the inside's nice. Now it's time to start adding the details. As I mentioned earlier, I'm going to be using this beautiful crystal trim. I've had this in my sewing stash for a long period of time, so I'm glad to be putting this to use. I still have lots of this blue elastic, so I'm going to be using this for the wrist cuffs. To sew down your beaded trim, make sure you place it all the way at the edge first, right sides together, and then go ahead and change your presser foot to a zipper foot, and then begin to sew it down. Once you're done adding the trim, flip the trim onto the fabric, so wrong side to wrong side, and sew it down. Think of this as a single fold hem. I'm using a separating zipper to close my jacket. I'm starting it a bit below the waistline and cutting it off before my breast area. You can close your jacket however you want, such as hooks and eyes, buttons, or of course a zipper. That was my choice. I didn't want my zipper exposed, so I hid it underneath the bias tape. I sewed it down using my zipper foot and proceeded to do it as normally. Bust out the E6000 and draw a line using it around the collarbone. Make sure this line starts at the front opening, goes around the sleeve, and to the back of the jacket where the clear fabric is. I'm going to be adding pearl cobacons. In pictures, it looks like she has round beads there, so that's why I went with pearls. 
Feel free to use what you think is best for your costume. I got out a piece of scrap paper the same size of the snowflake I wanted at the back of the jacket. I folded the paper in half and drew half of the design on the paper. This is what I came up with. Cut out the design carefully. You want to be able to use this as a stencil. I taped down the stencil on the place that I want to put the snowflake. I use a sponge and silver paint to dab it on. Lightly do this because it might bleed underneath, so take your time and be very careful. I went back with a fine paint brush and the silver paint to touch up any of the edges. I repeated this process six more times. Two for the top front of the lapels, the bottom lapels, and both shoulders. Because I'm a psychopath, I decided to start hand sewing in some beads. So get out the smallest, tiniest silver seed beads you can get, and we are going to be using those scattered across the top of this costume. Elsa has a decorative line that goes down the front of her outfit. I sewed a small line of beads on both sides. For the back piece, now that the paint is dry, I'm going to go back with the E6000 and some silver sequins to add the embellishment. I used a few different things in this final back piece part. I'm using a pin that I got for my wedding. I thought this would be perfect for Elsa, not knowing I would use it for this Elsa costume. I also added a lot of extra rhinestones to the back pieces for extra shine and embellishment. Feel free to go ham on this part. Using this Frozen Magical Guide, it's actually got some really high definition in it. And you can see that there's a lot of embroidery in small pieces. So like this part here on the shoulders looks like it's embroidered as well as this part and this part. And the little waistband belt thing is also embroidered. I feel like I want to add that and then you can see the tiny little crystals along here. So that's why I have the tiny little crystals along here. I did finish one part of the embroidery. So now I'm going to go back in with little crystals from here. Use my E6000 and glue them in nice little places such as here, 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 and you know, just add a little sprinkle. So here we are. I have finished the beautiful embroidery here on the front part and on the shoulders. I decided not to fill the shoulder pieces themselves. This back part is finished on both sides. It looks so amazing! So proud of myself. Now I'm going to go back in with seed beads and a nice little needle and then we are going to go ahead and sew it around the entire area. I'm going to do a heavy focus as a gradient from here to here and going down and going sporadically lightly. It made sense for me to start at the top of the collar and work my way down and then start filling in the gradient. Honestly, the collar was the most heaviest beading even though it's the smallest area. I wanted it to have a lot of focus and it took me a long time for me to sew all the beads onto this outfit. So go ahead and either use a lot of rhinestones, heat fix rhinestones, or if you wanna be crazy like me, go ahead and hand bead all over the top collar, the bottom part of the yoke piece and the shoulder area, and then sporadically place other crystals around it. I decided to use seed beads because that's what I thought her outfit looked like it used. You can use larger beads if you feel like it or different types of crystals. Headed back down to the bottom of the jacket, I made a template for the bottom design. It's a triangle with cutouts. I was going to embroider this, but I decided to save myself and use fabric instead. I'm using light purple satin for these triangle pieces. Now I'm going to cut it all out. On top of purple triangles are silver chevrons. I used a stretch bandex that has a brilliant silver for this. I repeated the same process as the purple ones. Create a template on paper, fold the fabric, pin it, and cut it out. Place the triangles down first, spread them out as evenly as possible, and pin them. Once you're happy with that, pin down the silver chevrons on top. My material is very weak and I didn't want it to fray, so I decided to glue down these pieces. I'm first going to start by gluing down the purple pieces first and then waiting till it's dry to add the silver pieces. After everything was dry, I added the final details to make it pop. Using a beading needle and clear thread, yes, it's a real thing, don't worry, I did a row of seed beads down the center of the sleeves. What I did was find the middle of the sleeve from the tip where I added the bias on the cuffs and pinned it. From there, I folded the sleeve in half to create a line. I pinned this down and sewed a beaded line going up the top. I didn't have correct beads, but I thought this worked out just fine. On the same note, to begin the cape embellishments, I'm using the same thread and beads. Make a small line at the bottom of the cape using the beads, just like the center of the jacket. I eyeballed where I wanted to place this. It's about an inch and a half away from the bottom edge. This is what the end cape is going to look like. And so now I'm gonna show you how we do this. 
In order to do this part, I used a variety of sequins, iridescent cerulean blue, smaller cerulean blue, and silver. I used a few rhinestones as well. I folded the fabric in half and then again. I marked the middle of these points. We are finding the middle of everything to make the long lines. I had a total of seven long lines. This helps me create the perfect symmetry throughout the garment. Put a paper underneath your cape so it doesn't bleed through. Draw a line of E6000 glue where your markings is. Use the iridescent sequins to fill in the line. I used 13 sequins to make one line. Do this for all the other lines on both cape pieces. While the glue is drying, I pull up the piece of fabric and make sure it does not adhere to the paper. And then if I have any sequins popping off, I lightly tap it back down. Now take the lines and find the middle point of them. Mark it with a pin. This time glue one silver sequin in the middle. Continue doing this for the rest of the lines. After all the sequins are placed down, create a V with the smaller cerulean blue sequins. I use three sequins on each side to create a V. Continue doing this on both sides of the capes and you know, the rest. At the top of each silver sequin, add three rhinestones. Now grab something with the straight edge. I'm using a card holder I got in the mail. Use this to find the middle point above your rhinestones from each corner of the lines. Draw a line of glue to the center above the rhinestones. Add about an inch after that point to make the extra V shape at the tip. While the glue is wet, add the small cerulean sequins. Continue doing this for all boxes. After you've made the crisscrosses, get out the rhinestones and glue them in the center of the sides of the rhinestones. This might not be perfect everywhere, but I kind of eyeballed this and just glued them on in place. Lastly, get out the larger cerulean sequins and glue it above the middle of the crisscross. Then add two smaller cerulean sequins above it. And for the super duper last part of this costume, add a single iridescent sequin above the lines. To begin the belt, I created the design on a piece of paper, folded it, and then began sewing it down. I'm sewing it down so I have the exact same design on both sides and I have an even shape. This is what it looks like and I'm going to be using this as my template. Now I'm going to pin down my template onto the dark blue fabric. I'm using a darker color than what the outfit looks like. This way it does not blend together. Now I'm going to slowly fill in the stencil with some silver paint. And here's an extra crafting hack. Go ahead and use a sponge, cut it into smaller pieces so it's easier to paint around the stencil. I cleaned up the edges with a small tiny brush. I asked my wonderful followers on Instagram if I should embroider the belt and so I did. You absolutely don't have to do this. After I finished embroidering, I cut it out and made a new belt out of scrap fabrics. I just made a wide pentagon and added two bands on the side. I made sure to top stitch everything down and to fit me. I added hooks and bars to close the belt. Then I found the middle and glued down my embroidery piece with extra sequins. Underneath my travel dress, I'm actually using a rhinestone mesh dress and I'm using gold bubble clothings, Elsa leggings. I have white boots also. Feel free to go get some nice boots that suit you. If you don't like wearing high heels, you don't have to wear high heels. Remember, being in cosplay is about comfort as well. I'm really happy that I was able to finish this the way that I wanted with the materials that I already had on hand. It's okay if you have to go out and buy materials such as a wig, fabrics, beads, sequins, string, and paint. It's normal to buy things for the hobby and passions that you want to pursue. That being said, I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial and if you love Frozen, make sure to click that thumbs up button. 
So if you like my work, make sure to check out some of my other videos located floating around here. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already. And remember to stay inspired, be creative, and I will see you in a future video. Bye!